Nowadays, many coaches swear by the rondo and positional games for all age groups, even for U6 or U7 teams. But is this approach universally effective? And what about senior coaches who dismiss the rondo? Are they onto something? At APFC, we've identified four developmental stages based on a child's cognitive growth. Early stages group, six to eight years old, development stage, nine to 12 years old, improvement stage, 13 to 15 years old, performance, stage 16 years and above. Today, we're diving deep. Is the rondo truly a one-size-fits-all drill? In youth ages, we must understand that our mission is to develop capable players, respecting their process. In the early stages group, children are primarily egocentric. Picture this, a young child on the field, eyes wide, chasing the ball joyfully. At this age, it's all about the thrill of the chase. The ball is like a magnet, and they're irresistibly drawn to it. Their world revolves around that ball. And their primary objective? Get it, no matter what. Here it becomes the first problem for players. We find different issues when we look for what problem exists in coaching at early ages. The first one is the interpretation and ignorance of the player at this age. Some coaches don't care about the nature of the child, and drills have an objective that is not proper for those ages. The drills in this which the player is forced to perceive many different items, bring high cognitive demands and levels of attention beyond the reach will be counterproductive for players and coaches. We'll be bored the players and we as the coaches seeing that the exercise is not working will feel frustrated. As Amanda Bissek 2015 study of 236 people, including youth soccer players, coaches, and parents, and also Gregory Myers' study confirms that at certain ages, the fact that over empathies on technical and tactical aspects in training sessions produce a loss of interest in the game and reduce the fun, with a possible burnout from the sport. Now, introducing them to a structured drill like the Rondo might be like handing them a calculus book and expecting them to solve equations. It's just not the right time. Instead, our training sessions should resemble a playground. At this stage, the player cannot have a relationship with their teammates or understand why they are doing different actions. Soccer is about understanding the cause and effect of the different elements of the game, the teammates, the opponents, the space, and the time. Those concepts and intentions need a cause and effect understanding. Why should I pass the ball for, to the front or far leg? Why now do I have to break lines or invite the pressure? The players at the preoperational stage of their lives can understand it. At the end of early stages, at the latest 7 or 8, we can introduce the rondo. When the players center, enter to concrete operations, still a simple drill, like a basic situation, improves in a better way than interactions that the players must develop at this stage. Then, let them feel the ball, let them make mistakes, let them learn at their own pace. Focus on the basics, dribbling without tripping, turning without losing control, skipping the pressure and chasing the ball. As you can see, we developed 12 drills in our APFC course early stages. Understand the player to develop the talent where the players can develop their abilities independently from their level to foster their creativity. As they approach eight, we can start introducing them to simpler group activities, laying the foundation for more structured drills like the Rondo. Before we dive into the development stage, if you're finding this content valuable, please take a moment to hit the like button and share this video with other coaches or anyone interested in enhancing their soccer knowledge. It helps us reach more people and share our insights on positional play. The second stage is the development stage. This stage occurs in children between 9 and 12 years of age and is characterized by a more logical and systematic approach to thinking. They are less egocentric and understand cause and effect relationships. The main difference between the early stages and development stages is the child's ability to think logically and systematically. As we explain in our YouTube video, Seven Aside Soccer, Essential Coaching Insights and Drills. The players play a game, the Seven Aside, where they must constantly face two versus one situation, where a crucial decision 
comes to their minds. Pass or dribble. Normally, the decision making at this stage is binary. I must pass the ball if I have no space and another player is free. If I'm the free player and have space, I must dribble to attract the opponents. It's a cause and effect relationship. At this stage, they want to be part of the group and the main objective at this age is to develop the individual foundations and make the rondo a perfect drill at this age. But the rondo is an excellent drill for the development stage. At the concrete pre-operational stage, the players want to improve their team spirit and empathy with the other players. The rondo improves the best interactions for this stage and is a perfect tool to improve individual foundations. The rondo is a perfect drill to use a warm-up or first drill of our training sessions. We can use a type of rondo with global methodology or global with context. We recommend using the rondo with a global methodology at the beginning of our training sessions and the beginning of the week. The global with context can be used at the first drill after a passing sequence, a basic situation or a rondo with a global methodology or as a drill before a positional game. The improvement stage occurs during the formal operation stage of cognitive development, typically between the ages of 12 and 16. Children develop the ability to think abstractly and logically. They can think about hypothetical situations, reason deductively, and understand complex concepts. In terms of how this development affects their performance in sports, it can be beneficial in several ways. For example, children in this stage may be better able to understand and execute complex game strategies, anticipate the movements of other players, and make quick decisions based on changing circumstances. Once the cognitive capacity improves, our players will demand more about our drills. A simple rondo, like 3 versus 1 or 4 versus 2, could not be enough for the central part of our training sessions. We must apply complex rondos. If you need some ideas, take a look at our 5 Rondos Progression YouTube video. The Rondo is a good drill for improvement stage to keep working on the individual foundations and become them to, into habits. These habits will help us to perform more complex concepts with success. As you know, during the improvement stage, we focus on intersectorial situations and must spend more time working on positional games than Rondos. The Rondos doesn't fit as a main drill at the improvement stage. It will need more context and many players to develop intersectorial situations. Also, because of the reduced spaces we work on, it's difficult to enhance the most important interaction at this age, the relationship between player and teammate, be the defender with the space and time. Because of the complexity that our players demand, the rondo can fit as a warm-up or first drill of the training sessions to become the individual concepts as a habit or to remember individual foundations that will appear in the collective concepts. Ultimately, during the performance stage, we can use the rondo the same way as in the improvement stage. Rondo is a perfect drill to increase the socio-effective relationship between players. Playing in a small space without time forces the players to react, not anticipate. Playing in an abstract context will help improve the socio-effective relationship between players and develop creative solutions for common problems, especially in reduced situations. We can add complexity and create complex rondo that increases the level of complexity for our players, making it more challenging and motivating for them. There are no good or bad drills, just drills that fit different objectives, contexts and moments of the session and the week of training. If you want to know more about the training structure and how your drills can change depending on the space, the rules, the number of players, or which type of drill is needed for your players, take a look at APFC The Training Structure with more than 180 minutes with practical examples to improve your training sessions. Would you like to see the same with other drills like the positional game, the small sided game, or the pass sequence? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for tuning in. If you found these tips helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more insightful content. Keep coaching smart and see you in the next one.